So these small molecules that combine to larger, larger molecules are called ligands. And the inhibitor molecules that are involved in, in allosteric inhibition um, are examples of ligands. And often these ligands bind only reversibly. So we actually have a binding constant that's associated with the ligand. And that describes the affinity that the molecule has, the bigger molecule has, for the ligand. So the higher the affinity, the better that the, um, the protein, in this case, it, um, the, the, the shape that, of the slot that binds to the ligand, the, the greater the complementarity of the chemistry of that slot and the shape of that slot to the ligand. The, the lower the affinity, the less well that the protein is able to bind the ligand. But if there's a high affinity, it means that the amount of ligand, the tendency of the ligand to be bound tends to be high. And if there's a low affinity, the amount of ligand or the tendency for the ligand to be bound is low. Also, the amount of ligand around is important in determining whether or not it binds. There is binding to the protein. So you've got these two things, the, the affinity for the ligand and how much ligand is around. The long and short of it is, is that if there's more ligand around, then even though the ligand's going on and coming off and going on and coming off, which is what's being shown here, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, even though the ligand is coming on and off, if there's lots of ligand around, then every time a ligand comes off, a new ligand's going to come along and bind. And that means the protein, by and large, is going to have ligand bound rather than not bound. And that means that whatever the ligand does is going to be happening. And so if the ligand is an allosteric inhibitor, it means that the protein is going to tend to not be functional. Now, when the ligand starts going away, or you start taking away the ligand, then there's going to be less ligand around when the ligand diffuses off, so it's not going to be immediately, re be immediately replaced by ligand. And that means that the protein is going to be more likely to not have ligand bound. And in the case of allosteric inhibitors, it means the protein is going to tend to not be inhibited. So it's this very dynamic process that happens to involve, uh, it happens to be a dynamic equilibrium. And you can perturb where that equilibrium lies by how much ligand there is around. And if it's an allosteric inhibitor, the more inhibitor you have around, the less functional the enzyme is. But it's not an absolute non-functionality. It's just that the enzymes are less available to the substrate rather than completely not available. And when there's less ligand around, it means they're more available rather than necessarily 100% available.